Hello and welcome back to the Mischief Gaming Show. I'm your host Bob Zombie and today we're going to be reviewing a little Nintendo Switch game called Vaccine. Now this game has been making its way around the internet and it's popping up on a lot of people's top 10 worst games of 2017. Um, how do I feel about it? Well, that's what I'm going to be discussing further. So without further ado, here's a review. Vaccine. Vaccine for the Nintendo Switch is a little indie game that is heavily influenced by Resident Evil, but with an arcade twist. It's not a full survival horror experience, it's more like a side end game from the older Resident Evil, kind of like the Hunk mission from Resident Evil 2. All the rooms and enemies are randomly generated, which means every playthrough is different, with the overall goal of saving a friend by finding a vaccine for a zombie virus in 30 minutes staying the same. This means you lose the ability to memorize the game's layout, which is one of the most rewarding things about the original Resident Evil games. Every playthrough is a gamble. You might get the weapons in the first room you land in, you might get them after 20 minutes of play before finding anything, which is kind of annoying, honestly. Enemies include zombies, rats, birds, and the most annoying, these liquor wannabes. Now this is where the game is going to get frustrating as all hell for you, because these little guys have no mercy and they will kill you faster than you could even think. And it's not because they're a hard enemy or a scary enemy, it's because the controls are kind of flunky and they're hard to shoot. The controls are very similar to the older Resident Evil games, but they're more stiff and rigid and they don't work as well as those games, unfortunately. I have had some control issues while playing this game. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like the controller desynced or something like that. I'm not sure if that's a hardware problem. But I've never experienced that with any of my other Nintendo Switch games, so just make a note of that before you go in buying. And this is only, I've only had this problem really when I've been using the Joy-Cons detached, not attached to the console. I don't know why. Um, it seems like I run into more glitches when I play on the TV rather than I play on the Go. Um, so just keep that in mind. Speaking of damage, this game likes to show your health in a numerical fashion. And every time you take damage, it's going to show you how much you're actually losing, which I'm not a huge fan of. I think it takes away from the survival horror experience, but that's just me. Unique to this game are some status elements. For example, your character can get confused, and it sort of messes up the controls. And you can also get status items, which cure those ailments. For example, there's gum, which makes you feel more relaxed. I'm not really sure what it does outside of that. Maybe it makes you run faster, but it's there. Interestingly enough, there's also this repellent, which is kind of like Pokemon repellent. Like, you can just walk through enemies and they won't attack you, so that's that's kind of cool. Speaking of Pokemon, this game also has RPG elements, allowing you to upgrade your stats after defeating so many enemies. You can upgrade your health and stamina, so on and so forth, which sounds all nice and good on paper, but it's kind of poorly implemented. There's no notification of you actually leveling up. It's something you have to find out on your own, and I honestly missed it out the first couple playthroughs. Let's play a quick game of Who Did It Better? So yeah, this game makes those scenarios look pretty boring in comparison, right? Like that's that's pretty bad. Anyhow, let's get back to the story. After actually finding the vaccine and beating the boss, which is just this tyrant wannabe, you bring your vaccine back to the friend and the game says, oh no, nah, fuck you, you're not done. Do it again and again and it's just a continuation of itself and honestly I didn't even have enough patience to play through the entire game. I looked up the ending online, so you know, sorry, not sorry. So, the music for this game is nothing to wonder at. It's not as bad as the basement theme on Resident Evil, but it's pretty it's pretty basic. Just like a little, little chimey, creepy, eerie tone to it. Uh, I really couldn't get into it. It's nothing that's going to get stuck in your head. It's nothing special. It's, let's talk about the graphics for a minute. They were trying to really capture the essence of the old Resident Evil's look, but it sort of felt flat and it more looks like a mix between the original Resident Evil and the original 1992 Alone in the Dark. It's just some of the background elements are 
very lazily. Some of the enemies are very lazy, and I don't know. I really think the only thing that looks good in the game are maybe the character models, although they just seem like a ripoff of Honk with the gas masks, and I, I don't know. I really didn't dig it all too much. I think this game falls flat mostly because it didn't have the same elements as Resident Evil. They went with the arcade route. I think that was a big no-no. I, I really think they needed to get rid of the randomization uh, elements to this game. I really think that puts a damper on the whole memorization and figuring things out that made Resident Evil so special. Um, it's really a gamble with this game and it's really... I want to say it's like an unfair game because it doesn't really give you a lot to work with um, or it does in, in some cases it gives you a shotgun right out the gate but it, but in other instances you can walk into a room and there'll be those liquor things with two of them and then they just spam and spam and spam and spam and spam and then you're dead so there's no way of saving it there's no way of going back there's no feeling of progression with this game uh, I guess until you get to the end game but I, I couldn't stand to even bother doing that so I think players could forgive the old school look of the game um, if it did have that better story or better um, me mechanics overall because the mechanics of the game just didn't work they fell flat and unfortunately it was a bad take on that that thing They're good ideas on paper but just poorly implemented I believe Hopefully in the future we'll get more high quality indies that match that Resident Evil like experience. Uh, even if they choose to use that polygon arch style, as long as the gameplay is solid, the story is solid, and it overall controls and feels good, it's not glitched out to all hell, shouldn't have a problem. That's another thing with this game, is there are a ton of glitches. Um, for instance, I got like stuck in between a door trying to hide from enemies and they couldn't get to me until I closed the door and then they just spammed the shit uh, out of me and killed me so that was sort of annoying and I, I ran into a, a glitch where I wouldn't stop reloading my gun uh, so that was also pretty annoying and I died from that now I mentioned before the video that this game was making its way to a lot of people's top 10 worst games of 2017 and I'm sort of on a fence with agreeing with them is it the worst game I've ever played I'd say far from it, but it is pretty disappointing and definitely not worth the $10 asking price. I'd say if you find it on sale from like $2 to $5, um, you might want to pick it up if it sounds like your cup of tea or something you'd be interested into. But other than that, uh, there's far better games on the Switch. Go play the uh, Spectre Knight expansion for Shovel Knight instead. I believe they're, they're around the same price. If you are looking for a game that does feel like a classic Resident Evil game, I highly recommend Prototype Mansion instead. It's a very uh, underground indie game, you can only get it from their website as far as I know. And uh, it's more of a parody than an actual um, survival horror, although it's, it's based on survival horror. It's got gunplay like survival horror, a um, little bit of item management. but. Um, it's more of a, a parody than, than anything. Uh, it's two bucks. I'll leave a link for it down in the description, and I'll probably review that next, to be honest with you. Um, the review schedule should be something like definitely Cold Fear, and we're definitely going to be looking at Prototype Mansion in the future. So if you're excited for those games, be sure to stick it here on the Mischief Gaming Show. Now, I want to point out to you that this game is nowhere near as bad as something like The Letter or Bread Pub Ballers. It's nowhere near as bad as those two games. This game doesn't make my list of top 10 worst games of 2017, but it definitely is one of the most disappointing games of 2017, at least to me, because looking at the previews, it looked pretty cool, it looked like a classic survival horror experience, and I was down. I was like, oh, dope, this is for a fucking Nintendo Switch. I just got this console, I have something to play, and then play, and it's, oh, it's just super, super below average. Alright guys, just a quick channel update slash explanation. I was pretty busy at work the past couple of months, but I'm back. I wanted to get my setup situated. I upgraded a lot of my equipment in these past months. I got an arm for my microphone. I got some uh, soundproofing panels, so hopefully the audio is a little bit better. I also got a PlayStation 4 Pro and a PSVR, so 
Um, hopefully we'll see more content with those, as well as the Nintendo Switch. I can also, you know, review games for that, uh, which is what you just watched. Yeah, anyhow, just to give you sort of an update on what's going to happen uh, from here on out, I want to sort of make a schedule of what I'm going to be reviewing next, or uh, sort of like what videos are going to be coming next. I expect two to three videos a week is what I want to do. Um, maybe like two reviews a week and then at least one stream per week uh, is my current goal. Hopefully I can keep up with that. Um, we've been hovering around the 278, 277 mark as far as subscribers. I would like to get it to the 300 mark. Uh, once we're at that 300 mark, I'm going to have a, another contest, another blind box like we did before. Uh, if you didn't see that video of what I actually packed in those, it's pretty fun. I'll leave the description at the bottom. Uh, hopefully we can get a thousand subscribers this year. That's my goal for the year is a thousand. Uh, we'll see if that happens or not. Probably not, but you know it is what it is. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in here to the Mischief Gaming Show. As always, I'm your host, Bob Zombie, and uh, see you guys later. <laughs>